Thank you for tuning in. I'm Aisha. Today I'm going to show you how to install a tucked radiator. I'm going to be doing this on my 1997 Honda Civic hatchback. There are a number of benefits to using a tuck radiator. My main reason for upgrading is in hopes that my coolant temperatures will improve with the larger core and the dual pass feature of the tuck radiator. Another benefit is that the tuck radiator mounts neatly below the radiator support and frees up space in the engine bay. Which for me is a plus because my engine bay is a little cramped with all the extra turbo parts. The steps of this install can be pretty universal, it's just the parts that are going to have to be specific to your year, make, model, and engine setup of your car. The parts that I'll be showing you here today are specifically for my engine setup, which is a B18C block with a B16 head. The tuck radiator that I'll be using is a Speed Factory Limited Edition in black which was offered limited to their 4th of July sale. For hoses, I'll be using Dash 16AN braided hose and fittings by Russell. For B-Series tuck radiator installs, Speed Factory recommends using four 45 degree Dash 16AN fittings and five feet of Dash 16AN hose, which I ended up altering what they recommended, so I'll go into detail later in the video. Tuck radiators don't have filler necks. So I'll be using this K-Tune upper coolant housing that when you're purchasing it has the option for an attached filler neck and it also has the option for either a push-on style fitting or a Dash 16AN fitting which is the one that I'll be using. I also needed Dash 16AN for the thermostat housing so I'll be using this K-Tune thermostat housing which has the option for either the push-on style hoses or the Dash 16AN fitting. To get started, I'm going to remove the bumper. Next, I'm going to be removing my intercooler and piping, but if your car is all motor, you can skip this step. I'm gonna drain the coolant from the radiator. I'm basically just gonna unscrew the drain plug and let the coolant drain into a pan that I have underneath. Now I'm gonna remove the radiator and hoses. If you need detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove the radiator and hoses, you can refer to the service manual of your car. Now I'm going to remove the thermostat housing and in order to do this you just basically have to remove the ground, then the fan switch plug, and then there's just two bolts that are holding it on. Which are normally 10mm bolts but I use downstar bolts so my sizes are different. Now I'm going to remove the water neck from the head, which is basically just two 10 millimeter bolts to remove. Now I'm going to install the thermostat and the K-Tune thermostat housing. If you need specifics on how to install a thermostat, you can refer to the service manual of your car. So I ran into a little problem. I was trying to install the thermostat housing and it's actually hitting in this area right here. It's hitting at this bottom corner right here. 
and the top hole doesn't line up with the hole in the back of the thermostat housing. And it's seeming like I'm actually gonna have to grind it down. I went on K-Tunes website trying to find more information and realized that they had a disclaimer in there, which I did not see before. So basically on their website, there's the thermostat housing and scroll down and at the end, right here, it says, note, slight modification may be required for some transmissions. It also says, may not fit with some scatter shields. So I guess I'm just going to have to start grinding it down. It's not very visible, so aesthetics wise, it probably won't look too bad, but we'll see. I'm just going to cover it with this paper so it doesn't get scratched up by the vise. Then I'm going to start grinding it with my angle grinder. Make sure that you test fit in between so you don't end up grinding too Now that I'm finished grinding, I'm going to try again to install the thermostat and the K2 thermostat housing. Problem solved and now it fits. Make sure you tighten all of the bolts and the fittings. Also make sure that you reinstall the fan switch plug and the ground. Now I'm gonna install the K-Tune upper coolant housing. I recommend that you use the bolts that K-Tune supplied. The mounting holes are countersunk and if you try to use other bolts, they could end up being the wrong length. Make sure you tighten all of the bolts and the fittings. Now for the next step, I'm gonna have to cut this center support. And on the bottom here, there are two tack wells that hold the center support onto the radiator support. So basically I just have to drill out the tack wells in order to separate the center support from the radiator support. Then I have to remove the hood latch to figure out exactly where I'll cut. I want to try to cut it as high as possible but still have the hood latch be mounted up and be functional at the same time. Now I'm going to drill holes through the tack wells. And now I'm just gonna use my rubber mallet to pound on the center support to try to separate it. Then I'm gonna remove the hood latch. Now I'm gonna remove my bumper support, but if you don't use one, you can just skip this step. You should always wear safety glasses when operating any machinery. Now I'm going to cut the center support using my angle grinder. After I started using my angle grinder to cut this center support, 
I realized that a jigsaw would probably work better in this situation to get a clean even cut. I didn't record this, but basically now I'm just going to take my grinding wheel and clean up the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to test fit and mark where I'll be drilling the holes in the radiator support and in the mounting tabs on the tuck radiator. Then I'm going to drill holes in the radiator support using a step bit. If you don't know what a step bit is, it's basically a drill bit that has multiple sizes. Each increment that you go, the hole gets larger. So I'm going to test fit the bolt every step that I drill, and when the bolt fits, I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to drill the holes into the tuck radiator tabs using the same step bit. The bolt doesn't fit so I'm going to go another step. And it fits so on to the next one. Now I'm going to mount up the tuck radiator to the radiator support using the bolts that I use to measure the holes and I'm going to use the corresponding size nuts on the other side. Now I'm going to reinstall the hood latch. Now I'm going to reinstall the bumper support. If you don't use one, just skip this step. Now I'm going to test fit the hose end fittings to make sure that the right degree angles go on the right ends. Speed Factory recommends that you get four 45 degree fittings. I was a little bit skeptical about that, just imagining in my head what it would be like. So I went ahead and I ordered four 45 degree fittings, but I also ordered one straight fitting because I felt like the top hose would be weird if it was a 45 because it's already high. And then if you put it like this, it's just making the hose go higher. So I'm gonna end up using the straight fitting for the upper 
radiator hose off of the radiator. For the rest of them, I'm gonna be using 45s. Maybe you might want to map out and see exactly how it goes, or you can use mine as a reference. If you like the way that mine looks, then get a single straight fitting for the hose that is the upper radiator hose and 45s for the rest of them. For those with a GSR head, the fitting is more in the front of the head and because it's towards the front of the car and closer to the radiator, it might make more sense. Maybe the 45 might work. I'm not sure the position or angle of how that fitting comes off of the water neck. So you might wanna look into that and, and use your own discretion to figure out what angle of fittings that you need. Now I'm gonna test fit the hose and mark exactly where I need to cut. I'm gonna use tape to mark off exactly where I need to cut the hose. Now I'm gonna cut the hose where I marked it off with tape. I know there are cutters to cut these hoses, but I don't have any. I find that using an angle grinder works pretty well with getting a straight edge. When you're purchasing a tucked radiator, they give you recommendations of how much hose you're gonna need. For the B-Series motor, they tell you to get five feet of dash 16 hose if you're using dash 16 hose. These are the pieces that I'm gonna be using. This is the leftover. This roll was six feet long. So if you measure them up, like that. I basically only used about half of it, which is three feet. I got six feet just to be on the safe side. You never know if you mess up on one of them and you need some extra. It can't hurt to always have extra. You can just get three feet and it would work perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna assemble the fittings onto the hoses. We're gonna unscrew this side. so that you have two ends like this. This is the part that you're gonna be putting on the hose first. Then you're gonna take this piece and you're gonna screw it in there. To make it a little easier, what I'll do is I'll take some WD-40 and spray on the outside part of the hose. It makes it easier to get the fitting onto the hose. So this here. Trust me, sometimes these things are a real pain in the butt. Once that you get it over the frayed edges, you basically turn it to the left, which is counterclockwise, to get it on. The treads on there are reversed, so it actually goes on when you loosen, turn it counterclockwise. And just keep going until the hose meets the lid. Keep going. So then now I'm gonna put this piece in here. Now there's threads on this fitting and there's threads on the inner part here and this basically threads in. I'm just gonna hand tighten this as much as I can. What I do from there is I put it in my vise and I clamp this bottom piece into the vise and then tighten this top section. Now, I don't have a wrench that's big enough so I have no choice but to use an adjustable. Minimize scratching. I usually use like a piece of paper. 
And I know that there's tools for these fittings as well that minimize scratching, but unfortunately I don't have any. I have to work with what I have. gonna tighten until it can't go anymore. One down, three to go. Make sure you test fit in between just to make sure that the hose is still going to be the proper length. Now that I'm finished assembling the hoses, it's time to install them. Make sure to tighten all of the fittings, including the fittings on the water net. Since there are two fans on the tuck radiator, I made this harness that will tie the two fans together and make it easier to connect to the factory harness plug. So basically one end goes to the factory harness plug and then the other end ties into both radiator fans. Now I'm gonna fill the system with coolant. Make sure to check for any leaks. I'm going to start the car up and let it cycle, let the fans come on a couple times, make sure that they work, check for leaks, and also let all the bubbles get out of the system. I'm just going to check the oil to make sure that the levels are good before I start the car. Now that the car is warmed up and the thermostat has opened and cycled, I'm going to put the filler cap on.
Make sure that the fans are working and blowing in the right direction. If the fans are pushing air instead of pulling air away from the radiator, you might have the fan wiring reversed. At this point, the coolant temperatures are reading around 173 degrees Fahrenheit. With my old radiator setup, the temperature would have been close to 205 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. There are still no signs of leaks, so I think we're good, and that concludes the install of the Tuck radiator. for tuning in with me today and I hope this video was helpful. If you think it was helpful, please leave a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos.